cake stuff and you're welcome at the restaurant. Beautiful day. Okay, good morning, um, good afternoon. Everyone, wherever you're joining us from, my name is Praise Fuwe, and I'm super, super excited um, to be joining here today. This is the last public lecture um, of the Institute of Family Engineering and Development in Africa for the year. Um, we've run like four lectures, three lectures already this year. This is the fourth one and the final one. And I'm excited about what we're talking about because I work in Texas, as you know, and um, work across North America and Europe. And one of the things I'm consistently confronted with um, is the fact that people um, always think that there is something wrong with African innovation. You know, um, the disdain with which some of the researchers look at um, whatever comes out of Africa, see if it can solve the problem of the world, makes me laugh and makes me smile all the time. I remember that um, I joined the Family Life Coaching Association in America about seven years ago. And the first conference I attended, you know, one of the discussion points we were having were the fact, was the fact that, the, the, that my colleagues in America, they were saying that our people don't come for, they don't finish their therapy sessions, that when an African comes for therapy, after one or two sessions, you know, they disappear and they never show up again, you know? And I laugh and I explain to them that we do therapy the way we take medication that if you give us medication and then um, you ask us to take two tablets for 10 days, by the fifth day, if we feel very well, we're not likely gonna complete it. And the fact that if you say we should come and be paying, you know, $100 per session, you know, as an African, once you pay $100 twice, you begin to ask yourself, you know, why can't I heal myself? Why should I continue to pay the $100? And I began to explain to them that if you don't understand the psychology of the African, then you will struggle to innovate solutions for them. And the fact that we are not absolutely scientific, we are both spiritual and scientific in nature. And so if you don't incorporate what looks like mysticism, what looks like magic, you know, wherein if I come to you without asking you questions, you know, you, you can decipher what my problem is just by feeling a couple of, answering a couple of questions, then I'm not likely gonna believe you because over there in Africa, we believe in prophets, we believe in our DBS, we believe in our Babala who can show us the way and things like that. And they started laughing. But, you know, during the plenary session, one of the core issues I raised was the fact that many of the researches that, you know, you want to implement, in fact, first question the fact that why do you always want us to take your certification program and take your programs when your programs has been proven not to have helped you? Because the rate of marital divorce in America is as high as you can get in any part of the world. So if these things that you want us to come and take to help our people really, really works, how come your rate is like this? How come the marital institution is in trouble? You know, like this, why are you not also thinking of taking our home or do you think our home is inferior? So I began to talk to them, you know, about Oyela, that the Institute of Family Engineering and Development has, you know, innovated over the years, which is basically what we use because when I work with Africans here, you know, we just run a psychometry and, um, by the time they complete it, we write the report and it's 96% accurate. As a matter of fact, a lot of our men don't like to come for counseling. The women are the ones who are quick to, you know, escalate a matter and bring it for counseling. You know, so when our men don't like to come, what we say to them is, you know, what you need to do is just get your husband to complete the psychometry and we'll send his report to him privately. Once they get a report and they see how accurate it is, you know, they are eager to come for counseling because they're like, ah, who told you about my child? Who told you about, but the data can pick that, you know? So it's not as if we do not have what can solve human problems, you know, across the globe. By the time we made that presentation, they themselves, they themselves agreed that that was the first time they would see something that combines coaching with um, therapy, with strategy and with systems intelligence, which will hardly, you know, have a combination of that across the globe because the client does not know the difference between a counselor, a therapist, a coach, the client simply wants a solution. He simply wants to solve a problem. So if you tell the client, you know, you know, I'm just a counselor, you know, I can't, I can't coach you. The client does not understand that, right? So we need to understand the need to begin to scale up what we have. I think that Africa has got a lot of solutions. We have our system that has worked for us culturally that we can export to the world. We talk about Ubuntu, which is no man is man except through others. You know, there is no me without you, which is a concept about humanity that emanated from Africa. We talked about it takes a village to raise a child. 
you know, wherein we, we do communal, you know, um, parenting. I remember the time I would have gotten into the casino to become addicted to gambling. I walked into the casino as a six year old because my friend has told me that I have 10 kobo. I can double the 10 kobo if I put it in the casino. And as I stepped in the casino, a man looked at me and he asked a simple question. Are you not for West son? I looked at the man. I was able to recognize him. I wouldn't know. I said, yes. And the man said, if you don't live here right now, I'm going to give you a dirty slap and I will report you to your father because your family does not do gambling, right? If you are a Yoruba boy, what the man literally said to me was that I was a bastard, right? That if you do what contradicts your family values, you are literally, they begin to doubt your paternity, right? So we have our system that works for us. The problem is it has not been properly documented and we've not properly scaled them, believed in them, be confident about them and sell them, you know, with, with, with all that we have. And, and I was sharing with some of my friends yesterday that humorously that I have been called back by Nigerian government to solve more problems since I left Nigeria than when I was in Nigeria. And when I was in Nigeria, you send proposals, show things, you know, and it speaks to the psyche of leadership that we always think that it has to come from abroad for it to be right without asking, how has this solved the problem abroad? So I am glad, really, really excited about this conversation today. This is our public lecture because we are going to have someone that is very, very, very vast at what she does, you know, and um, deliver a, a, um, you know, a lecture. And then we're going to engage her and ask her a couple of questions. So if you have your questions, please feel free to raise your hand. Feel free to put them in the chat box. We will tell you how that is going to pan out. But we believe that Africans are human beings. Africans are intelligent. I refuse to bow to the notion that there is something wrong with us. There is nothing wrong with us. In fact, I was asked to take a certification recently. And by the time I looked at the qualification, you know, um, I said to them, you know, I, based on my field experience, I think I'm above this. And they said, no, but you still have to take it. So I said, why don't you come and take my own? I also have my own that can enable you work with a lot of blacks across the world, you know, and we laughed about it. We need to believe what we have against all earth. We need to learn to document it. We need to, you know, collect data and be able to share our data to say when domestic violence happened, this is why it happens. This is the problem. This is how long it's going to take if you follow this model. We need to begin to create a framework that works and that can solve the problem of our world, as you have heard. By the year 2100, it is projected that 4 billion extra people would have been added to the planet. Now, majority of those people are going to come from Africa. What that means is, while the rest of the world is reducing the number of children they are having, Africa is fulfilling Genesis 1, be fruitful and multiply, right? The replenish and the dominion, we worked out of that WhatsApp room. We are not in that WhatsApp room, but be fruitful and multiply, we know that one. Now, if we are becoming the powerhouse of the world, Lagos is projected by 2021 to be the number one mega city, the most populated mega city in the world. What is our preparation? The ratio you know, of a mental health professional to clients around the world is about nine to 10,000. In Africa, is 1.4 to 10,000 know, know, clients. So which tells you that we are way, 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 way behind. What do we need to do? How do we scale up? How do we begin to do more certification programs? You know, how do we beef up the work of the counselors, the, the psychotherapists, the, the, the psychologists, you know, with the new wave and the pseudosciences that is evolving, you know? So that's what we are gathered here to do. And on that note, I'm gonna be welcoming my guest, um, our guest today, who is gonna be sharing with us for um, about 20 to 30 minutes there about then we will engage our in a panel session. Uh, where we're going to be asking a lot of questions on what they have done, what they're doing, and how we can uh, project African innovation to the rest of the world. My, our guest lecturer today is a professor of guidance and counseling in the University of um, Illinois Department of Counselor Education. Since appointment in the university, Professor Esere has served and is still serving in various capacity as head of department, legal advi level advisor, faculty-based examination officer, Secretary to various university based communities, postgraduate seminar coordinator, postgraduate coordinator, chairperson of various community committees, including quality assurance in the Faculty of Education, University of Illinois. Professor Isere also serves as a doctoral external examiner 
in the University of Port uh, South Africa, University of Cape Coast, Ghana, Obafemi University of the Covenant University of Ota, as well as Nigerian Baptist Theological Seminary, Obomosho. She has served to completion six doctoral theses, 53 master dissertation, and 160 undergraduate projects. She has a flair for teaching, organizing practical community services, and carrying out researches, particularly interested in development oriented research. She has successfully supervised and examined many graduate and postgraduate projects, both within and outside Nigeria. Professor Mary Ogechi Aceres' research effort has gravitated around a number of issues surrounding marriage, sex and family counseling, gender issues, communication with marital um, therapy, and gender counseling related issues. She has conducted surveys on gender-based domestic violence, intimate partner rape and violence, at risk sexual behavior of ongoing um, adolescents, of school going adolescents, she has been involved in developing psychological support programs for couples in conflict and implementation strategies for youth. These efforts have resulted in over 90 research publications in local, national, and international peer reviewed journal outlets and conference proceeding with two scholarly books on marriage, sex, and family counseling. She developed a proposal that was used in setting up a world-class counseling and career services center in Kara State University and also served as a pioneer director of the center during a sabbatical leave tenable at the university. Professor Esere is happily married with um, children. On behalf of the Institute of Family Engineering and Development Africa, please let us make welcome um, to the podium for our um, guest lecture today, um, Professor Mrs. Ogechi Mary Esere. You're welcome, madam. Thank you very much. Yeah, so the floor is yours, ma'am. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Just give me a moment while I share my slide. Sorry. I want to start from the beginning. Yeah, you can you can go back to you can just flip up, flip up to the beginning, or you can just go to the down part. Um or go to your slide and um do a slideshow and start to click go, start from the beginning. To the beginning. Yeah, go to slideshow on your PowerPoint. Excuse me. It's hanging. Yeah, so click slide. Uh, I'm sorry, just give me a moment. I didn't know that the thing is. Let's go get that and then go from the beginning. Um, okay, I'm sorry for that. How do I go to the beginning? Can you go to slideshow? Look, just look up on your PowerPoint. Uh, is this slideshow that I'm... Yeah, just okay. go up here. No, 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 not that. Go up, go up a little bit. You will see where you have insert, design, transition, animation, slideshow. Uh, the, yeah. What we are doing here is covering it. Can I minimize? Okay. I can't see it though. Hey, no, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> where is he? so can you take your cursor can you take your cursor to up to where you have slideshow you can see where but I'm pointing something is covering it something is covering that menu bar well it could be the way you share okay don't worry I'll I'm almost there okay Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good Thank afternoon. you, uh, the director, for the beautiful introduction. You are all welcome to the public lecture that is organized by Institute of Family Engineering and Development. As Elia said, the title is African Innovative Solutions to Global Family Life uh, Crisis. I give thanks to God Almighty for this opportunity 
And this platform that has been created through the power of uh, technology for me to reach out to some people and to share my thoughts on this topic. I also thank the audience that are here. I thank you because without you being here, there wouldn't be me here. I acknowledge the efforts of the organizers, especially the director, Institute of Family Engineering and Development, praise for Uwe and his team for the invitation they extended to me to be the guest speaker. I've noted with key interest the theme of this lecture, African Innovative Solutions to Global Family Life Crisis. Now the choice of this team reveals the presence of creative minds. You have heard him talk. You know that he has a creative mind. Creative minds that are ready to make a mark in our society because the nucleus of the society is the family. And when the family is at peace, when there is peace, when there is harmony in the family, it will have a positive multiplier effect on the society. So let us start this lecture by looking at what we are going to, how we are going to organize it. We have concept clarification, what precipitates family crisis, African innovative solution, principles underlying family happiness, and then my final thoughts. I will try as much as possible to be very brief, going by the number of minutes I have given. Uh, you know, when you tell a teacher to come and give a lecture, you are giving the teacher 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Let me see what I can do. I hope I will not be carried away. So let's look at some basic definitions. What is marriage? Marriage has been differently conceptualized by different schools of thought. As we have different people here, when uh, someone was introducing members, some people joined from US, some people from other cultures. Just as we have many cultures, we have different definitions, concept of marriage. However, authors seem to present marriage in general as a union between two individuals. So marriage is the social institution that is approved for the establishment of a family. In other words, without marriage, there won't be family. A family is described as a unit consisting of parents and their children. We can also say it's a group of persons forming a, a household. So marriage is recognized by society as the basis for a family, as I said earlier. So it's a group of people that are descended from one, sorry, family is a group of people descended from one ancestor. In other words, there is a bloodline when you talk about relationships. Now, the director has said a lot concerning crisis. The first person that also, the host also talked about it. Nobody is immune to this crisis. It's global, it's worldwide. The world is, in fact, uh, if, if I may say, come to Nigeria, if you don't have crisis of one form or the other, come and we'll baptize you with one. So crisis can be experience that is producing a, a stress uh, uh, situation. It can be something that you're having difficulty coping with. It can be difficulty meeting basic family responsibilities and so on and so forth. So what then is family crisis? It's a function of wranglings within a family. It's also a function of life challenges and nobody is, no family is immune to this. So a family crisis is a situation, sorry. A family crisis is a situation that upsets the normal functioning of the family. And this can come in various forms. You have the external form, internal form, then developmental form. The standard form can come in form of loss of a job when a family member, the, maybe the, the, the breadwinner is no longer having employment. It can make the family to go into a, a, a crisis. Natural disasters like fire outbreak, flooding as we are having it right now in Nigeria. You can imagine the wahala, the stress, the crisis that people that have been displaced by flood, what they are facing now. This crisis can also be internal. Daily hassles, daily family hassles, how to make ends meet, alcoholism, financial issues, domestic violence, infidelity in the family, divorce, and so on and so forth. 
It could be the developmental, which there is nothing you can do about that one. When there is pregnancy, for instance, especially if it is a first pregnancy or arrival of a baby, retirement, death of a loved one, all this can precipitate crisis in the family. And this crisis, they have effects. Crisis threat threatens people's physical or mental well-being, or even two of them. It can take a long time for people that are passing through crisis to recover. For instance, the flood victims that we just talked about. So it is against this backdrop that a lecture like this becomes necessary and indispensable for us to rub minds together, for us to interrogate some issues that will help us live a productive family lifestyle. So to do that, as the director mentioned, we propose the Ubuntu way. And in Ubuntu way, all hands must be on deck. Every member, every member of the family, both the nucleus, the extended family, community members, that is what Ubuntu preaches. Ubuntu, the concept, is embedded in our African cosmology. It's about how we live. I am because you are, is the basic principle. Ubuntu is about togetherness, about connectedness. Ubuntu is about support of one another. So when we use the Ubuntu principle, when there is crisis, especially crisis that is externally motivated, we we'll find a, that we are not alone. We reach out. We reach out to those family members that we say should, their hands must be on deck. We do not reach out to social media we reach out to our members. So Ubuntu means loyalty. It is about trust. It's about reciprocity. It's about everything that will help you realize that you are not alone. It's about live and let others live. When we have this concept, we will be able to solve whatever crisis, whatever problems that are coming on our way. Ubuntu is about empathy. Empathy simply means Working in the shoes of others, reversing roles. When there is a crisis in the family, when there is problem in the family, let's assume you are not the cause of the problem. The other person is the cause. How do you react? Do you turn your back to the person and say, okay, oh, because I'm not the one, it is your problem, solve it. No, you try to walk in the shoes of that person. You try to reverse roles. You ask yourself, if I were to be this person, how would I want to be treated? Wouldn't I want somebody to give me a listening ears? Wouldn't I want somebody to help me out of this problem? That is the principle of Ubuntu. You empathize. You know that you are not alone. You know that your, your, your success is the success of everybody and vice versa. So Ubuntu is selfless. There is no individuality when you talk about Ubuntu principle. And that is how we were raised in our culture. That's our socialization. You are not raised to be selfish. You are raised to have a communal living. You heard the story that uh, uh, Mr. Fogo we just uh, told us about what happened during his childhood. The person that asked him to run away didn't say, ah, because you are not my son, why should I correct you? No. So there is, is there is time for us to bring back that Ubuntu principle and let it govern every aspect of our family life. It will go a long way. It's about reciprocal effort, as I have said before. Buddha is about love and respect. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, respect your husbands, submit to them. This complementary role, if we all key into it, it will go a long way in solving many problems and we have in our homes. Unconditional positive regard simply means knowing that you are important and another person is important too. Accepting your family members as human beings, first and foremost, that have dignity and worth, and relating with them in that sense, knowing that their opinion matter as well, just as your own opinion uh, matters. Acceptance, I am okay, you are okay. There are basically four principles of life, concepts of life position. This I'm okay, you are okay, finds relevance in our Ubuntu principle. This is um, uh, uh, a, a life concept that shows that, okay, you recognize that you are a human being. You recognize that you're a human being with faults, 
with frailties, with some level of uh, goodness too. You also know that another person has. The other principles of life, uh, concept of life position should not be practiced in a family setting. What are these? I am not okay, you are okay. I am not okay, you are okay is the principle of life position that is held by people with inferiority complex. When you have inferiority complex, it will not go well for public members because you will be feeling that, okay, you don't have what it takes to contribute your quota. You don't have what it takes to make a stay, that to, to, to say something positive that will help in the family. The other one is, I am okay, you are not okay. This is also a life concept that should not be practiced in a family setting. I am not okay, sorry, I'm okay, you are not okay. It's a life concept that is held by people with superiority, comes, uh, com, uh, superiority concept. When you have superiority concept, you will find it difficult to, let, to bring yourself down, to learn. You will find it difficult to listen to the instructions, the advice of people around you. You are man alone, woman alone. You believe that you know it all and it is not the right. Mbutu is about support, yes. We support one another in every areas. You support one another. Don't forget that life is said to be an echo. It is what you put in that you will take. If you don't support people, it may not, that support may not come to you when it is your turn. So those are some of the things we want to say concerning Ubuntu principle. Now, in dealing with family life crisis, we should avoid the blame game. It is his fault. It is her fault. It is their fault. That is why I need to go to social media and then let every the world know that my husband has offended, my wife has offended, my children. No, avoid the blame game. Blame game will not help in any way. And we should also seek opportunities for fun. Yes. Try not to let the tragedy that has uh, to totally dominate your world. Try to do things in common, as we said earlier. Try to eat together. Try to do things together. Unfortunately, the advent of technology is making this difficult, including in the family of your yours truly. I remember a time when my husband, all of us, we like listening to him tell us stories. My people call it Okaman. Okaman is folk tales, I mean fairy tales, something like that. He will talk, he will talk, even the children. We, we would like to sit down together and be listening to him. But these days, what is happening? What's up? Social media, this one is, you come inside in the city room, this one is with his own phone, that one is in the, his own room doing his own thing. No, we need to, we need to come back to the, to that a uh, culture of, living life as a family. Yes, I'm not saying you shouldn't be current, but what is happening now? I saw a picture of a family that went to go and visit grandma. The fact was one side, watching TV, uh, looking at the phone, mother, children, everywhere. The grandma they went to visit was just there looking at them. So we need to bring back that culture of sitting together because it's by sitting together, talking together, doing things together, that issues will arise and you need them in the board. When we are too individualistic, when we are too man alone, woman alone, children alone, it is not the right thing. It is un-African anyway. And when there is problem in the home, keep destructive impulses in check. Rather than responding to the crisis with anger, you know, we call this negative coping strategies. People employ negative coping strategies to solve family problems. Either they are too angry. Remember, they say a lot of danger. When you are a man of anger, a man of you are dangerous and you can do anything. You know, when you are too annoyed, you can take actions that you may regret later. So don't use negative coping strategies when they arise, when there is problem in the home a drug use, alcohol use. Some people will even leave the house. Emotional withdrawal. Rather, we should have positive thoughts. 
again, we need to realize the importance of communication. Yes, it's very, very important when dealing with crisis for us to be able to make a headway. If there is a solution to the problems in family relationships, it is communication that is sincere, open and sympathetic. Only effective communication can lead you and your family members to communion and union. So keep communication open. Show empathy in your communication. Do not rush into judgments. No matter the type of crisis, no matter the type of problems, try as much as possible to ensure that you take your time. You, you are open in trying to explain your point of view. I statement is what we need to use when solving family issues. I statements help you express the way you feel and what you want. You statements are accusatory in nature and will only lead to anger and defensiveness. Take for instance, a woman that tells the husband, you have never, you Okay, looks like Professor Isere is having a network issue, so we wait for her to get back. Um, but you can meanwhile drop, um, you can drop what you're learning on the chat box already. What have you learned from what she said so far while we wait for her to come back? Um, what have you learned? Can you just drop it on the chat box um, while we wait for Professor Esere to come back to the room. Okay. Um, looks like she dropped out of the meeting. Um, we will, okay, use of I statements. Rod Kepo, she's saying use of I statement. So we wait for her to get back, um, but she, she's talked about, uh, narrowed down on the Ubuntu um, you know, ideology of the African, you know, which is um, interestingly the model of the Institute. Um, that's what the Institute is, Institute of Family Engineering and Development is built on, um, that I am because you are, there is no me without you. What have I do against you? I do against myself. You know, that no man is man except through others. And that's one thing she's really, really emphasized. Um, and I think that that's one of the core, um, you know, solutions that Africa can export to the rest of the world. Because, I mean, the, I mean, I, I live here right now and I can go like two weeks without my neighbor checking on me to say, are you okay? How are you doing? You know, so I'm just here by myself. But in Africa, someone is going to check on you. I mean, I can't be hungry right now and, um, you know, I'm going to get to my neighbor to get food. But in Africa, you can carry your spoon from house to house and then just meet them. They will even tell you, come and eat in the Yobako, even though when they tell you come and eat, it's not because they want you to come and eat. They expect you to say, um, thank you. <laughs> but if you still show up, they're not gonna pursue you. So she said a whole lot. Um, I'm gonna read a comment. Um, Africa is changing too, especially the urban areas. Family life will reveal issues and it will be solved. Um, so Jane is saying the Ubuntu ideology was very interesting. I'm okay, you're okay. The most elder life position, yes. Um, a general say use of I and you statement, um, family need time together without distraction. That's very, very important, especially in this era where we carry um, our devices everywhere we go. Um, Amala is saying we need to look closely at the damage social media is causing to our social interaction. I, I don't, is it that it's causing a damage or we are the one causing the damage? You know, because social media is social media. I, there is no Facebook that can tie Facebook and Instagram cannot tie a rope around your neck and say, you must come and you, you must come here today. You know, it's you that carries the phone. So, um, yeah, but I think that, yeah, those things are there, they can be distracting, but we need to, um, you know, um, find a way around it. Limited use of social media in families. So families must be families. Um, Motalani, can you check if she's back? Um, Ebulomo, can you help us check on R to be sure that, I mean, we know how, a network can be in our blessed country. And then um, we're all working hard to ensure that Nigeria gets to that place where you don't have any interruption um, when it comes to 
to network issues. Okay, chip blessing. We can see your end. Um, or in case when we get to the question and then it's the time, we will call on you. Okay, Ronke is saying um, in the um, part of Africa is becoming like that now. We must not lose seeking to care about each other. Very, very, very important. You know, Africa is about caring. You know, this culture of me, myself, I don't, you don't bother about me. I day my day, you day your day. Or like everybody now says on social media, this is my truth. This is my truth. You know, even when your truth is in the make out to someone else's growth, or when your truth is insulting, or when your truth is socially unacceptable, we must accept you like that. You know, even when your truth is bad behavior, you know, so um, it's very, very, very key. Um, you know, what we need to do. Okay, um, my elder neighbors still check on me. They even pray for me. The younger ones are different, but do I check on others too? I guess I do via social media. Um, when you do bed day in times past, you know, everybody will gather and come and eat rice with you. Now we are comfortable to write beautiful messages on social media, and that's all. We have greeted ourselves. We move on. In fact, now with every statement, we say we move. How does that help us? And how do we, within the ambit of technology, begin to innovate creative solutions that can help? Okay, Dr. Um, Professor is back. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Um, we knew that was a network glitch. So over to you. Uh, okay. I'm very, very sorry about that. Actually, okay, I think this is where I stopped. Actually, my I didn't know I didn't put my phone for it to charge. I'm sorry. So this is where I stopped. I said there is need for us to use I statement from your point. Of view, that I will only lead to defensiveness. I hope, I hope you are hearing me. Please, yes, if you are not hearing can, me, let me. We can hear you. It was, it was. Okay. Um, it was so I me. was saying, let's assume you, you, you tell your, your wife, your spouse, your husband, you have never, you have never remembered my birthday, and the man may now start thinking, okay, 2020. I think I celebrated your birthday. 2020 or uh, 2080, um, 1980, I did that, I did. So we shouldn't use you statements. When you use I statement, you express your concern in terms of you. How is that situation affecting you from your own point of reference? Don't use you statement. Then use respectful tone of voice. That is African. A respectful tone of voice conveys that you are taking all that seriously and that you also expect to be taken seriously. Don't look down on any member of your family. Don't look down on anybody. Use respectful tone of voice in talking. Okay. I hope this thing has not... Yeah, just keep clipping. Ah. I'm sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. If there is solution to the problems in family rela relationships, it is com communication that is sincere, open, and sympathetic. Okay, um, Professor, are you there? I think your network is... Um... Oh, sorry. We can't hear R at the moment. Okay, um, looks like um, we, we can't hear Carl. Um, okay, good. Well, um, we can hear our, what we're going to do is, um, Eben, we take reflection, then maybe when she's back, um, we will engage our in a 
plenary session. Um, yeah, because they, it looks like the network where she is is a bit. But I mean, she's delivered enough. Um, you know, maybe the rest, what we'll do is um, we will ask those as questions during the plenary session. Okay, Bolomo, um, I think you can take it from there. Then I will um, engage. Thank you very much, PF. Uh, um, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining. Professor Eseres' internet, I get, is acting up. And um, it's been an interesting one so far. I appreciate and enjoy the comments I'm reading in the chat box. It shows that we are following and it shows that we all are so concerned about the situation of family in Africa. This is not about Nigeria alone, this is about Hello. Africa. And that is what we recognize. Can you, share your screen? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, ma'am, you are back, right? Yes, I'm so sorry about this. So the first principle there is watch your thoughts. There are sickly thoughts and there are wholesome ones. Thoughts are not to be taken lightly. They have forces that can propel you and your family members to summits of life as well as to other rings. So like a constantly alert driver, be mindful of the thoughts you have. Have positive thoughts about yourself and about your family members. If you continually think that your husband is a nobody, or your wife is, 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 is a nobody, or your wife is not pretty, that's why you are going out. I wonder, you are the one that married her. She, she, as the, a woman, you are the one that married your husband. You need to watch your thoughts because as you think, so shall you act. Your thoughts should not be allowed to, okay, I'm sorry. You need to watch your thoughts, as I said earlier. Because as you think, so shall you act. Now, criticism divides, appreciation unites. Nagging and criticism are sure ways of digging the grave of family peace and harmony, including criticizing the, student, the children. A good number of us, we don't find anything good in our children. We use negative words on them. Some people even call their children normally. Chineke. Normally. Does it not mean a bastard? That means you get back to a, best, a bastard. And we should try as much as possible to avoid trivialities because trivialities are at the bottom of most family crises and unhappiness. Yes, a sister of mine once called a friend of hers in the US, excuse me, and asked her about the husband, Johnny. And she replied that she has divorced Johnny why? She said it's because Johnny did not kiss her when he was going to work. Hey, I hope you heard that. Kissing, kissing, that's all you may say. Johnny did not kiss her while he was going to work and she read meaning into it. And that was what led to divorce. So trivial things like a kind word, a well-timed gesture of love can help family members to grow together happily. So in your family relationship, criticize less and appreciate more. Recondition your attitude. Attitudes are formed due to reputation of thoughts. A man is what he thinks all day long. A woman is what she thinks all day long. As you think, so shall you act. Unfortunately, attitudes are, attitudes, our attitudes are a function of our socialization process. Some of us have been socialized to believe that the man is the macho man is the all and all. As the head of the family, I can never go wrong. No, brother. As the head of the family, my world, I, what I say is final. You have one head, I have one head. So we are equal. No, sister. Equal to God that we are equal. Is the internet also playing up again? So if you watch your thoughts, you can identify and correct your attitudes. I hope you are still hearing me because thinking is nothing but talking that goes on in you. So listen to your self talk to identify your distorted attitudes. Compete with yourself, not with your 
with others. I need to rush now. I just have a few more slides. If you are a rose in your house, try your optimum to be the most charming and most fragrant rose, and then be satisfied with your achievements. Comparing your family lot with that of others is an insane attitude because all hands are not the same. If you continuously compete with others, you will become bitter. But if you continuously compete with yourself, you become better because the only person you should try to be better than is the person you were yesterday. So competing with others is an insane approach. SYZ family have a jet. Baba Lagbaja, you must buy jet. SYZ sister goes around with a gold, gold uh, trinket. Baba Lagbaja, come and buy me gold trinkets. Now you don't know the resources of those people. Are you people having the same resources? Don't compete with others. Lastly, the principle of advance for the last slide, I think. Forgiveness is the art of writing off emotional debt owed by others. That is letting go the past hurt, injury inflicted by others. Forgiveness is also embedded in our Ubuntu principle. So to build a successful family relationship, members should learn not to drag the pains of yesterday into the future. Some of us, especially the women, your husband offended you today. You, you, you make noise, make trouble about that offense. Okay, another network um, glitch. Um, Ebulomo, can you take it over? And um, I think she's almost done, actually. Um, yeah. She has like 32 slides and she's on 27. So about so, three um, or four more. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think she's almost done. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you for your patience. This is Nigeria. I believe we all know that um, the internet thing is not peculiar to one person alone. Anyways, it's been an interesting and um, a fantastic one. PF started the reflection when he talked about um, the fact that Professor Esere has narrowed down the Ubuntu principle, which I think is a major one we need to start talking about in Africa talking about the fact that um, Umbutu principle, we don't have to be selfish with Umbutu um, principle, love and respect. And I love, she used a word there when she was talking about love and respect, saying that it has to work hand in hand. We have moved from that time of, okay, if you, she does not respect me, I will not do this because now women are finding ways for themselves. So we need to come down to that level of, okay, so what makes the family work? Are we talking about um, doing the right thing or you just want the right? As in taking the position of right or you want to do the right thing? What is the right thing that will make your family work? What is the right thing that you expect in your family or in your marriage? And how are you bringing up your children? She also started talking about the children, raising of the children. She also talked about, she emphasized on communication, which is one big thing. You just assume that everybody should know what's in your mind. Daddy, we don't know. Mommy, you need to talk so that we will understand what's going on in your mind. And this principle, the underlining principle she started talking about, she mentioned something about um, thoughts. I call it interpretation. What meaning are you reading? So what your partner is saying. And this meaning you're reading is based on what you have in your mind. And that is the interpretation. That is the lens through which you're seeing everything that your partner is doing. So she has talked about, check your focus. He said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What are you focusing on? What you focus on will determine the thoughts that goes in your mind. And these thoughts would determine the kind of emotion that you display. And this emotion, we go 
all way to determine the kind of behavior you will exhibit. And of course, the outcome, the, the, the outcome, the things that will be happening in your family. And this is, I think this is what we need to start teaching in our environment so that we will move away from the old knowledge, the old principle, you know, these are the solutions. Umbutsu principle is a big one that um, I think if we can major on, and um, according to Dr. Uh, Professor Eseri, if we can major on in the in, in but, Umbutsu principle, we'll be able to deduce and innovate the, the solutions that suit us as an individual. And this will also help in the global family life. It will help in the global family crisis. It starts with the family. Family is the smallest unit of the society. This is where socialization starts from and we need to start paying attention. It goes beyond what you provide. It is about what you do because that is what even the children as of the leaders of tomorrow, the family leaders of tomorrow are paying attention. I think I've been able to reflect on this even though she was not able to complete our um, slides. She also talked about competition. She talked about forgiveness. And um, I'm reading now and I, Sally Unuruddin talked about procrastination in attending to family needs should also be avoided, that you should pay attention to the needs that is being raised by your family members and not pushing it aside. Can we just pay attention to all those things? Don't let us start, we, you know, our parents, they, they like to form busy while I was growing up, you know, and that's a part of the things that we missed. This present generation, I keep telling people, the generation Z and generation alpha, they are not patient enough. If you are not there to attend to their questions, if you are not there to respond to their needs, they move on. The social media is there. They have ready-made answers there for them. And so we need to come back and pay attention to all those things. All the rat race, can we just pause a little and go back to the Ubuntu principle that talked about love, that talked about um, unconditional positive regard, that talked about, I'm okay, you're okay. When you're not okay, I am not okay. These are powerful principles that I think Professor Eseri has been able to talk about. Um, right now, I hand over to... PF, while we move on to the panel discussion. Thank you very much for this opportunity, sir. Um, thank you very much, Ebu Lomo. Um, Prof is back. Um, I don't know the state of her. Um, we're gonna just get into a plenary session so that we take Prof off, up um, and ask a number of questions um, so that we can save um, our timing. Okay, yeah, so- Let's move on to question and answer. That's the panel discussion. That will help us have more knowledge to this topic, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, Admin, can you um, just take... Okay, so for the plenary session, we're gonna have um, Professor Isere and um, um, Chidema Unwobi, who is the Director of Studies at the Institute of um, Family Engineering and... Um, development. Okay, so um, can Dr. Unshare our screen um, so that we can bring the people on the screen? Or oh, admin, can you help with that um, so that we can get into the Q&A um, session? Talani, are you there? Okay, good. Okay, so um, we're just going to get into the plenary session, and I'm going to be um, taking up Professor Esere. Um, I'm just going to bring on, on the screen, okay, hot spotlight, and I'm going to bring the Director of Studies of the Institute of Family Engineering and Development, Mrs. Chidema Unwobi. Um, Dema, how are you doing? Dema, you are on mute. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. I'm unmuted. I'm doing great PF. It's great to be here. I've just been taking in um, what Prof was saying. And I'm like, 
wow, she's hitting some nails on the head, particularly with the Ubuntu principle. So I'm glad we put this together and I'm glad that everyone who is here gets the opportunity to share this ideology with us. Okay. Um, okay, so Prof is back. Okay, so let me bring Prof on the spotlight. Okay, Prof, you're welcome back here. Um, Thank you very much. I'm very yes. sorry for this. It's okay. Uh, this is the first time this is happening to me. I'm sorry. We, are, we understand. I mean, network is something you can't control. Um, it's, it's beyond you. So we quite understand. Okay, so I'm just going to be um, taking... Honestly, okay, I'm going to start um, by asking Dima. Um, Dima is the Director of Studies at the Institute of Family Engineering and Development. Um, Dima, when we talk about African innovation, I mean, Prof spoke extensively about Ubuntu. And incidentally, at the Institute, you know, Ubuntu is... Um, our opus day, you know, we we it's it's what this institute is built on. Um, but the, the first question I'd like to throw at you, um, then I'll also ask from the same question. Why does this seem like African innovation is not adopted globally? I mean, we talk about Ubuntu, we just talk about Ubuntu right now. And the world world is in crisis. Look at the crisis between um, Ukraine and Russia. If there was Ubuntu, there wouldn't be that crisis. I am because you are, um, you know, they won't go to war, you know, but Africa seems to have the solution. Why do you think it's very um, difficult for our solutions to be adopted um, globally when we, it's very clear that I can solve global problems? Dima, what, what do you have to say? All right. Um, thank you, Praise, um, for that question. And I think I'm going to be taking it back to um, post-colonial days mm. because Starting from pre, let's even take, go back pre-colonial. Pre-colonial, our people had innovations, solutions that were working. Somebody could go into the forest, get some herbs, mix it together and administer it to someone. Back pain is gone, fever, it, it, it disappears and a lot of things. And then when the colonial masters came, we kind of allowed them because I say we, because we take joint responsibility to make us feel that our solutions were not useful, were not good. And because probably we didn't trust what we had, again, we also do not have effective um, documentation processes that help to say, okay, this is what you do, this is what you do. And so post-colonial days, we got into this mindset. When Prof was talking, she talked about your thoughts. As a man thinker, so he is. And so irrespective of what you think, what you allow yourself be made to think becomes your new default thinking. So the way um, westernization was brought to us, it was brought, it was fed to us to see that our systems were inferior, to see that they were bringing us something superior but we already had some systems working which we did not document. And we continue to that with that mindset up until now. Praise, we've been in international conferences together. We've spoken at um, events. We've even carried the solutions. And then you sit in the midst of the supposed people who know everything and they are wowed. You mean you're African? You need, let me give you a typical example. Um, the Happy Fire Your Life, the book which you know about, which has metamorphosed into a, a movement. Um, an African lady who is a UN diplomat got the book and then she sent me a message to say, Dima, if I did not know that you were the one that wrote it, I would have thought it was written by an American psychologist. And I'm like, because we are not speaking forth and using our solution. So, there are innovative solutions from Africa. Fundamentally, what we need to do, first of all, is to sit with our beliefs about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You are a person who is African. You want to, first of all, say to yourself, who do I believe that I am? Mm -hmm. And even the religion that was brought to us tells us that we are gods. And mm -hmm. so if we are gods, the religion didn't say black God is different from white God. Caucasian God is more superior than brown skin God, right? So if we have accepted that as our faith, and it says we are God, we need to fundamentally sit to us with ourselves and say, what do I believe about myself? Number one. Number two, 
we need to also go on with the innovations that we have created because you have to first of all fix the belief when you fix the belief then you have to test the solution use the solution locally i'm going to now ask everybody here because i like people to start immediate implementation so if you go through the chat room you are seeing people say oh I like Ubuntu, I like Ubuntu. Let me drop an assignment with us for today. If you've listened to Prof and you were fascinated by the idea of Ubuntu, I want you to take immediate implementation in your own family. What are the minute, tiny steps I can quickly do as an individual to make Ubuntu alive in my home? If it's the idea of allowing your children to speak up their minds, you do that. If it's the idea of self-care, because you cannot promote humanity if you are empty, if you're shattered, if you're battered, if you don't feel that you have anything, all right? So it's first of all, so let's go do that assignment. Then we have to use the innovations that we have created. Mm. And as you're using the innovation, please document the process. The other day I was on TVC and I was telling her the exact day I got the inspiration for some current project that I'm working. And she's like, you have the date. I said, that is why we think African innovations is not working because nobody is documenting. Nobody is putting down even, I want you to know that you need to believe in yourself that no innovation is fully made from creation. But if you are not documenting the process, you are not documenting, oh, this one worked this way. This one did not work this way. You can't know what to tweak. Mm. Every innovation that we are running out there to go and grab from the Western world, it is because somebody took the pain to go through it, document the process and tweak where needed. And please, the third thing you need to do is go and stand on the mountaintops. They said, nobody lights a candle and puts it under a table. If you have fixed your mindset that innovations that can transform the world can come from you, if you are beginning to use it locally, like we're doing with um, FSC, we've imported FSC globally, people are coming from outside Africa to take the course. The next thing we need to do to ensure that African originated innovative solutions become global is to stand on the mountaintop with a loudspeaker and talk about it. And when you stand with your contemporaries, who are from outside Africa, please do not shy away. Do not say, hey, let them talk their own. Now then get the science. Now they, they don't have science if somebody who starts to study something and documented it. Yeah. And let me even shock us. Sometimes when we talk about science, we're expecting that you have to do a research with 1 million people. You can have a, some prof here, here, you can help me. I never reach professor, but I'm aspiring to be like you. You can have a sample size of 200 persons and they, you run an experiment with them and it becomes science, right, ma'am? Mm -hmm. It becomes something that is published. So even the work you're doing in your neighborhood can become scientific. It is just because you have not taken the pains to go through the data and to you know, standardize it. So what I'm saying is fix your beliefs. There is no innovation that, can, if anything has been created by a human being, it can be created by you. And again, because of our unique experiences as Africans, we even have lived experiences that can help us put it on top theory. So if you're not just talking theoretically, you, if, if you want to describe crisis, is there anybody better than somebody who has survived Nigeria in the eight, past eight years to describe crisis? No, if you've lived in Nigeria for the past eight years, you have ample evidence to describe what it means to strive in a crisis situation. Then secondly, document it. And thirdly, go on the mountain tops and be screaming for everybody who wants to hear because okay. what Africa has is global. Thank you very much, Dima. Um, and so I'm gonna to go to Pro. Um, Dima has talked about documentation. Um, I think part of the challenges in documentation is this um, the, the gap or the distance or the maybe lack of handshake between innovators and um, academia. Um, even in the US, there was a cry uh, by the psychologist right now that the entrepreneurs are setting up um, and entrepreneurs and innovators are taking their jobs away. And so what entrepreneurs are doing is now they set up private practice without having a psychological degree and they hire psychologists. And because they can market and sell 
and they pay more. A lot of the psychologists prefer to go and work with them than stay in the academia. Now the academia is shouting that um, they are taking our people away and things like that. Now, um, I realize that there has to be a handshake. Now, how do we ensure that that handshake happens? Especially now we've spoken about Ubuntu. Now, I know the problem Americans are having and the UK is having. You know, um, I know an adage where I come from that the wisdom of the child and the wisdom of the adult is what has created um, the land called Ilefe, right? It's a Yoruba adage. Now, the question I have for you is, um, how do we ensure that there's a handshake, you know, wherein um, innovators sometimes may not even understand the science, where um, academia can study the science and put it in a scientific format that can scale. But the other thing is, how do we document our innovation and how can we, not just documentation, because academia would document, many of those things from theory to practical is where the issues are. How do we document one? How do we implement two? Then how do you think we can begin to scale? I know that scaling part is tech um, solution, which we can always do, but uh, I want to start from where do we do the handshake between the innovators and the scientists in the academia? Then how can we begin to document intentionally, then implement, then scale. Thank you very much. Before I go to that, I just want to add something to what uh, Chidima said. The, first, the question that you asked her, why the West, they are not adopting our tested solutions, like the booty we are talking about. Uh, I think she mentioned something like that. I think one of the reasons is the way we view things. We, we, we do not see, we do not think that we have what it takes. We need to restructure our cognition. We need to let the world know because you are supposed to accept yourself before you talk about acceptance of others. When you have not accepted yourself, you don't, you don't believe in, in yourself. How can another person buy, buy your product, so to say? I went to one supermarket to buy toothpick. Toothpick, last one. Somebody called one ridiculous price. I said, what? He said, it's important. I was amazed. Say this one, important. Is it the, when you talk about uh, wood or whatever they are using, do we have it more in the West? that you go and import toothpick. So I told the person that I want the one that is made in a lorry. A lorry, I don't want imported toothpick. So that's, that's one problem we are having. We are yet to accept ourselves. We are yet to accept what we have. And it is this lack of acceptance that is making people not to key into our ideas. We do not believe in them. We do not really know that we have we have what the world is looking for. Let's just use that word. Okay, so concerning that, I will say the simple thing is collaboration. Mm. And this collaboration is not just by words of mouth. Mm -hmm. Like we are here as academics. You are, in fact, the time I went through your profile, I was amazed. Yes, I was amazed. Immediately you gave me this information. The first thing I did was to check you out. Let me just tell you that. I was amazed by what you have been able to accomplish and document too, because I read it. I read the beginning. I read what, how this idea started all over. So that's, that's reaching out. It has to be symbiotic. You don't have to wait until I come to you. You do too. You don't have to wait until I, I don't have to wait until uh, you come to me. Let, let's, have, let's have that connection. Let's go out. When you see something, for instance, there is something I have read concerning when I went through your profile that I've already painted that, that I was going to speak to you concerning this. Mm. We can take it off from there. And then, just as Chidima was saying, I will bring in the academic flavor. You bring in, you see, you have the ideas. You, will I call it, will, will I say, the, the, you, you are the foot soldier, so to say. You are out there, you are getting the raw information of things that are happening. By the time we pull together, we will be able to now, you know, join hands together and do the research we are talking about, 
bring uh, statistics because that is what the West they are looking for. Yeah. Bring out the statistics that they will now use and say, okay, well, it is true. What is that statistic? These things that you are telling me, this thing in Buddha you are talking about, for instance, how, how, how has it worked? What evidence do you have to prove that this thing is working? The Ibos will now use that evidence to be able to replicate what we are talking about. I don't know whether I touched what you said. You have, you have, you have done a massive job. Um, and um, that goes to all my colleagues um, because I have always believed and we always believe in, in collaboration as well. Um, that, I mean, it's the wisdom of the academia and the wisdom of the innovators that can begin. I mean, I never, um, and I'll share a story. I was in a meeting here in the US and it was a, a meeting. I was the only black in the room. And um, I, I met someone who was racist who, made a derogatory um, remark about me being black. And I, it was supposed to be an innovation, innovators forum. And I stood up. And when I introduced myself, and I said, in case you don't know that I'm a descendant of the generation of the ancestry that, made, that created the first smart city in the world. So you can go to Guinness Book of Record and check out Benin City. You will find in 1300, the innovations that your people stole and they took to their museum. You know, and I went on and on and on and on. By the time I was done telling them about how we built a wall that stood for 400 years, you know, the, the entire room just stood up and they started clapping. Now, my experience from that is the fact that if you don't define what you want to call yourself, then people can call you all kinds of things, especially when you're in the room and you keep quiet and you, um, you know, feel that you are very incapacitated and things like that. Thank you very much. I mean, I'm going to take up that collaboration a whole lot, and I'm going to trouble you a whole lot now. Um, you yeah, will be now, welcome. No problem. I, I have another question. Um, the rate of um, um, the ratio of mental health professionals um, to clients, you know, across the globe is about nine um, to hundred thousand. In Africa, is one point four. Um, you know, to to health care practitioners, and we know. See, our schools now have been in. So let's even assume that we want to produce a certain number of counselors. A certain number of psychotherapists every year. Um, our school is nine months in uh, on strike, ten months on strike, and, and things like that. Now, what is the role? And I'm, I understand that the, there is a law that has been passed right now. Um, you know about the counseling profession. You know which has been passed into law. Now I know that out here there are licensed post aiders. You know who are trained. You know who can do basic things. You know and, and uh, you know so. What are we doing? Uh, I mean, I know that you are very, very, you have done very well. And we must applaud. In fact, when I heard that law was passed, I was very, very excited about it. And kudos to everyone who worked to make it happen. But what are we doing, you know, to ensure, because one to 1.4 to 10,000 is very scary for me. You know, how do we ensure that we scale up, you know, skilled professionals who can actually help people? Um, because when we started out, we, we started out simply because we noticed that a lot of people were using native intelligence. Nothing was documented. And so we wanted to say, okay, we can help people, you know, so let's innovate accelerated solutions that can help people. And we ensure that they did field work. And so how do you think we can help Africa, you know, um, have more people who are skilled and can help? I mean, look at all over right now. There's always one crisis on Instagram about marriage, somebody beat somebody. How can we ensure that we scale um, and accelerate that process so that we can have more skilled people who can provide help um, and we can scale it up to be compatible with what happens across the globe. Thank you very much. I would say we need to raise the bar on all fronts. Raise the bar on, in fact, you are even talking about, uh, okay, the school system, you, you think that we have counselors there. I know we don't. Yeah. Because they will not use the counselors to teach. Uh, mm. They will use the counselors to teach mm. and not to perform their primary duties. Mm. So we need to, the, the, I normally tell my students, I say the ball is in your courts because you are going to be the tomorrow's minister of education, minister, the, you know, you are going to take over. When you are there, what are you going to do? What policy are you going to bring up? Are you going to use the school counselors? There was a time, I think it's in this environment, a counselor was made an education commissioner mm. and she brought up a boss. 
dedicated to, you know, counseling, going for, for rural intervention programs, counseling based programs. But when she finished her tenure as the commissioner, someone else that read something else came up and changed that boss to that thing that he read. It should not be, we need to work together. We need to bring out policies that will sustain training of counselors and making them to do the work. Look at the crisis we are having in secondary schools these days. It was because you told me that this lecture was going to be short. That was why I didn't go into giving us statistics about evidences of crisis. So many of them in secondary schools now, what the children are doing is the one of the things to point to the fact that we don't have counselors mm. and we need these counselors. I was told that in some other clients, what people have, what they have is a family counseling therapies yeah. instead of medical doctors as family doctors. Yes. The reverse is the case here. This is the time for us, and this is part of it, to speak up wherever we are, that we need counselors, both for their training and in the, in, for practice. Mm. It's a pity. I don't know how many schools that can beat their chest and say, we have a counselor in school and this counselor is practicing. Mm. They will take the, the, the teacher, the, 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 the staff, and push the person to the staff, to the classroom to go and teach. It's unfortunate that we believe that there is anybody can cancel anybody that what is there mm. is unfortunate. Mm. So we still need to, those that are in a position to make policies true. Although the policy statement is there, it's the implementation that is the problem. Yes, yes. Yes, the implementation is the problem. If you go to the national policy, the, the, the uh, education national policy, you will see it there. The counselor should be posted in those, they, 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 they are posted there, are they being used? They are not being used. Wow. So that is issue. Okay, um, you have said a lot in um, your response. Um, I know that a lot of policies exist in Nigeria that nobody's doing anything about, um, you know, because you have real, I mean, if the data you have on secondary school, I mean, we, we pre recently began to create intervention for private secondary schools in Nigeria. And I know that what you're saying is absolutely correct. I mean, guidance and counselors are asked to go and teach CRK or IRK or teach um, social studies, you know. And um, in fact, we, we just finished implementing for a school and the guidance and counselors were met on ground. You know, it was, it was I mean, I know the mind is laughing. She, you would almost shake your head to say, what's going on here? It's almost as if, um, and even the ratio is, I mean, I spoke to another school two days ago and um, that school has over a thousand students and they only have, like um, eight counselors, you know, to- ah, eight, they even one have one. <laughs> Now, again, the person, the head of the counseling team told me that, you know, they, even after that eight, you are not sure what they can do really, you know, <laughs> so it's, um, it's, it's a yes, major- that is one thing I forgot to mention, that there should be in-service in, uh, in training, training yes. and retraining. Yes. You know, it's not just enough. Most of the times when you go through the four walls of the university, most of the times what you will have theoretical things and so even when you have practical students will be interested in passing exam yes they will not really practicalize these things so that we are also calling on uh, the associations yeah. to ensure that training and retraining goes on yeah i know what you are talking about you didn't want to say it openly <laughs> <laughs> Bro. i understand Perfectly what we are looking at. So we need, we need that training and retraining. And that yes. is why this collaboration is also good. You Very that are out there, we can collaborate to mass workshops, training yes. programs for yes. can, practicing counselors in various sectors. And I, thank I, God with um, the B that has been passed. Hmm. Yes. Just like medical sectors, uh, medical doctors will set up shop. Counselors can also set up their own shops. That's 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 fantastic. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, you know the the thing for me, um, take out for me from everything you've said is, I mean, collaboration has consistently um, been reverberating um, because, I mean, schools, for example, you are dealing with Generation Z and Alpha. 
And we don't even have enough, even in America, they don't have enough research to understand the dynamics of Generation Z and Alpha, you know, which is totally different from the Generation Z. The Generation Z and um, Generation X students were afraid of their teachers. They respected their teachers naturally. You have a Generation um, Z right now who is in, a, in SS3, who is dating maybe a commissioner, already dating a commissioner, you know, or dating maybe even a governor, you know, and um, you are trying to tell her, sit down, you are not, she's looking at you and say, what, 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 who are you really? You know, so, and those are new changes that the old model or the old reality or the old data may not be able to power. And so I quite, I agree with you on the need to consistently retrain because the rate of change in the world, they say it used to be six months. Now they say it's two months, you know, things are changing at the speed of thought. Okay, Dima, there is a question for you um, here by one of the participants. What do you suggest to wives who tend to disparage their husband once he couldn't meet a particular want, not even the needs at a given time? I want to first of all start by letting women and men um, by extension to know, first of all, understand what marriage is and then who you are as an individual. As much as when we come into marriage, there's a mutual giving and receiving, you need to first of all be holding yourself to recognize that your husband was, is not your husband to meet your needs. Is your husband because both of you have chosen to do life together. So if you are discounting or you are disrespecting your husband for not meeting your needs or your wants, then it leads to question, what are you doing? Which is why every woman, male or female, first, I, I want to say male or female because every human being should be able to generate money to meet their needs and wants. Then it's a different question if based on the dynamics of your family, you now choose that a particular person should be in charge of the finances. So say for example, if that is the case for that woman, that the husband is the one in charge, we call it in family systems engineering, the family economy. So you're saying that the husband is the major financier of the family economy. Then also such a family should not leave the money that the woman needs for her own wants and desires to the will of the husband to dispense. There should be a family budget where there is an allocation for personal needs for both husband and wife. So that within your budget, the wife can meet her own needs. In that way, you are not expecting that your husband should meet your need. But if it is not an agreed system in your home that the man becomes the major financier and you are going about other things as, de as determined collectively by the family, then you as a woman should also have a means of generating money and contributing that to their family economy. And the family economy should be disbursed according to the agreed way the family has chosen it. Now, if your family is not functioning this way, this is the ideology we teach in FSC, where nobody is left at the will of anyone. If that is not what is operational in your family, and it is still the basic traditional family setup where the man is expected, you hear women say, the man's money is our money, so you should bring the money to take care of me. I'm the one giving birth, I'm the one doing that. And the woman's money is her money. Then I'm gonna encourage such a woman, you need to step up and find something doing. Because if you continually leave the meeting of your needs to a person. Um, Prof said something when she was teaching and she said um, sometimes some marriages break down because of, um, I can't remember the term she used, some frivolous ones. And she gave us an example of a woman who divorced her husband because he didn't kiss her in the morning. You could also liken that. Waiting for your husband to meet your needs is like you saying that the power and the will that God has given you as a human being, you cannot amount to anything. You cannot generate anything for yourself. You actually are admitting, which is a sign of low self-esteem, that I'm incapacitated to produce anything. So I need a human being to sustain me. But if you understand, so I'm going back to beliefs. If you understand that you are a God and that God has given you the power, the mind to generate wealth, then you wouldn't need a man to provide wealth for you. You can create yours and whatever be the family economy should be disbursed according to agreed terms and conditions. Okay, thank you very much. I'm gonna ask Prof one final question and I will take a final word. 
Um, thank you very much, Prof. I mean, we've been tremendously blessed. And I want to appreciate every member of the academia in the room because I know we have lecturers. If you're a lecturer, please, can you just type I? Please, let's celebrate them. Thank you so much for showing up to support our Prof. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Prof. Um, a lot of Africans struggle um, to go for counseling. You know, in fact, a lot of our men would rather, except when the matter has become maybe cancerous, is when they now will want to show up, you know, for, for counseling. You know, what do we, how do we, I wanted to speak to everyone, then on the need to normalize um, counseling, you know, and to know that you don't need to have problem before you even go to a counselor. It's like a doctor, you go for medical checkup every day. You should go for counseling checkup. You know, um, I wanted to speak to that and then your final word um, for us today. Thank you very much. You have said it. In fact, we... Internet, internet, internet. Prof must talk, this internet, you, you must not win us today. <laughs> okay, Prof, um, internet is... Uh, buffering while we're waiting for prof maybe i will just take um like some thoughts on that so we're waiting for her to reconnect and um you were asking her about counseling and why people um are not open to it is prof back i want to yeah. also create an um analogy with that of health we've seen people die from cancer because they did not get to the hospital until it was full blown and so there was nothing the healthcare pro, uh, personnel could do because it had gotten to the critical stage. But we know that a good number of the different cancers that are around can be um, worked on if there is early detection. So that is one part. Again, it's important just like medically how we promote um, annual um, checkups that people begin to see seeking counseling and coaching as part mm. of the processes you do for your holistic well-being. If I don't have to wait till I'm down, somebody said to me, she went for her comprehensive and they found um, that there was sugar in her urine. And so she was put on an alert to say, hey, you need to check your lifestyle because you are becoming pre-diabetic. Some other person has been told, oh, there is tendency of some cardiological um, issues, cardio, yeah, cardio issues with you, and then they are doing lifestyle change. But somebody did not do that and just suddenly slumped. So if you have that preventive, um, proactive sense to your whole being as a person, then you will see counseling as you going forward to check yourself, check your relationships, check your mind, so that you can begin to take steps that we improve your flourishing rather than waiting when things are critical and then you're struggling to recover. That's um, some education we need to keep giving our people. Yeah, Prof is back. Um, yes, prof, thank you very much. And that is also to let us react So that is why we need to factor it. We need to put it as part of what we do as a Pack your family members, go and visit a counselor. Go to a counselor and talk things over. So by way of my uh, parting words, I don't know whether you saw my last slide. I, wa I want to say that in whatever situation, whatever that is happening, let us factor God into the equation of our family life. Yes. Let's factor God in life. And you will be able to navigate safely to harbor. It is when you, you know, do it alone. You can't go solo. You can't do things if you don't have God in your life. It is going to be a lot of crisis. And even when this crisis come, you wouldn't know how to handle it. That's just what I want to say finally. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much, um, Prof. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Please, can we celebrate, Prof, in the chat box? Can we celebrate, Prof, in the chat room? Um, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Prof, for uh, obliging us. And, um, 
you know, showing up here today. Please, let's appreciate and let's celebrate her. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Okay, Dima, I am going to hand over to the Director of Studies. Um, she has uh, some information for us before we go, but before um, then, we're just going to play a short video for us, then the Director of um, Studies of the Institute for Family Engineering and Development is going to speak to us. Okay, so just um, give me a moment, please, to, okay, good, I think we're out there. Across Africa, there seems to be a gap, and the gap has been the fact that when people have family life issues, they do not know where to go as a family life therapist. In 19 years of working with various families, one of the biggest problems I found is the problem of parenting. Simply because an average parent does not understand the script that requires to raise a whiskey or a global icon. Some single people will say to you that marriage is a necessary reform until they really want to venture into it. So people are looking for solutions, looking for answers to their family problems. When people talk about the marriages, what do they get advices from? What are the templates that people use in navigating their lives? So the more you learn, the more you understand, the better becomes wow, beautiful. So what does I want to do? Tell somebody who has not attended this course. Uh, it's not something I can tell somebody to try it yourself. Because if I tell you, <laughs> my my testimony or my comments may be limited, but it's it's a course we're taking. No matter how far you are going to marry, because if it doesn't work for you, we can help you to establish you to help other people. Yes, so. It's a for everybody. Why it is culturally acceptable to ask for in the customary marriage, parental consent is a vital requirement. In response to this report, the role and his team came up with this robust curriculum. Working and also time, seven days of real life experience, seven days of or learning a lot of things that I thought I believed in, and a lot of, um, of, of culture that I've been put in us. From when we were small, we will now discover that some of those things are not even So it's been a time that you learn. Plan your life on the next. So one of the things you learn in class in these seven days is how to help people create a 25 year plan for their marriage. There are people in your house. We are going to be in the 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 house. The past seven days has been very exciting, very insightful, has been mind blowing. I am Grace Moore, Premier Trainer of Family Systems Engineering. Probably. Thank you, people. And if you are still here with us, we want to celebrate you because this has been an engaged um, conversation going on with Prof. Thank you, Prof, for that enlightening engagement. And so um, just to continue the conversation, um, this public lecture is put together by the Institute of Family Engineering and Development. And in our conversation with Prof, something came out for me, particularly with regards to talking about um, the government 
even accepting and embracing the work that social entrepreneurs like us are doing outside of academia. And one thing I found out it's about, I call it half baked. You know, some certification programs that you see out there, somebody just attends class for three days and then is given a certificate as a certified coach, a certified family life practitioner, a certified this and that. But I think it is part of why we are having the kind of problems we are having in Nigeria, where the supposed certified people are causing more harm than good for the general public who come to them. And so for us at the Institute, that is not what we do with our certification program. So just permit me in like two minutes to just give you an intro to the family systems engineering approach, and then how we work to raising competent um, family life practitioners who are using our tools and methodologies, not only in Nigeria, across Africa, in North America and in Europe. So the Family Systems Engineering Certification Program, it's a, a uniquely built program, like PF said, that combines coaching, therapy, um, systems intelligence to teach us how to get into the mind of the average individual. First of all, to find out what makes a person do the things that they do. When we were watching that documentary, somebody sent me a private message to say that I was saying that in a family, people should be able to agree on what to do. And he said, why do women want to share the homework with their husbands, but they don't want to split the bills? And it still boils down to fundamentally the beliefs that the person has which is one of the tools you will learn to use in FSC, beliefs compatibility, that even before somebody decides to get married, they need to understand what are their fundamental beliefs about themselves, about the institution of marriage, about the roles and responsibilities of man and woman, and about who a husband and a wife is. Because that is the, the scientific, for us as a lot of Nigerians, we are so religious that we know the quotes but we don't translate them to everyday living. So if I'm going to quote one of the verses from the Bible, I'm a Christian, where we talk about not being unequally yoked with unbelievers, in family systems engineering, we have broken it down to steps and procedures. Because if you understand, if you take the beliefs compatibility test for yourself and for your partner, then you will know if it is somebody you want to yoke with. Because people with like beliefs become yoked and they are functioning fine. Other things we do is our psychometric um, test, which we call the Oyela, that helps you to get into the mind of the person you're working with. And many a times when you present the report to them in a systemic way, they're like, oh my goodness, how did you know what is happening in my home? And not only do we take you through 12 weeks of class, when you, the next class is starting on um, the 3rd of February and it's going to run for 12 weeks. After the 12 weeks, you still have to go into the field and practice. You are to complete a 100 hours practicum. And at the end of your 100 hours practicum, you will be tested by the panel, or, um, the panel of judges. And when we can certify, so Prof, you see we have some of the method, the approach that is even used in academia. So we don't just graduate students after 12 weeks and they go and be brandishing our certificates as family life um, practitioners of family life engineering. We make them, they go through the home, um, the field work. They have 100 hours practicum to satisfy and they have to submit it to the institute, then they qualify to ap ap appear for defense. And at the defense, they demonstrate their competence and mastery of the approach where they are giving case studies to treat. And if they get up to 70% pass mark, then they can qualify to be decorated as uh, family life practitioners, which is what I think if a lot of bodies can put this into practice, we will be getting at least 
people that may not be from the academia, but also people you can beat your chest that they understand what they are doing and they will not be hurting the lives of others. So if you're here, you're passionate about family life, you want to go through the family systems engineering to understand how to build an ultimate nation, to understand the different marital formations that people play. Why are people called the brethren? Why are they galacticos? Why is there Tantish Romeo? What is the dream team and what are the 12 pillars that can help a family create a dream team? It's part of what you learn in the curriculum. You also will get to understand yourself. What is your personality? What is your love language? What makes you do the things you do? So that is part of the package that the Family Systems Engineering Certification Program offers. Now, for being here at the public lecture, um, the certification program costs 400000 but if you're here at the lecture and you want to take advantage, then we have two entry points for you. First of all, you get it for 350,000. So you have a discount of 50,000. And then you have to activate the 350 by making a payment of 50,000 Naira. Then you can spread the remaining 300 um, as installments. But after today, if you do not make the payment of 50,000 today, then you'll be taking the cost with us at the full price of 400,000. So admin, please drop the link for them to make the first part payment of 50,000. And what you find out with family systems engineering, like a lot of people who have taken it, is first of all, who is it for? It is for anyone who is passionate about helping life. It's for pastors, it's for imams, it's for teachers, it's for educators, it's for family life practitioners, it's for people working with children, everyone who wants to help transform Africa through effective family systems. But one thing you will find out is that when you come into FSC, you first of all realize that it was first for you because it increases your self-awareness, to relate with yourself better, relate with your family, and so help you to practice the Ubuntu principle in real time. Secondly, it's going to set you apart from everyone who is making noise on social media. Now you know how to engage with people. Now you know how to help people bring transformative change that is deeply rooted from the inside. And of course, and this for me is one of the best gifts that FSC gives you. It makes you belong to a tribe of people who understand the same ideology. People you, who can check up on you, people who you can work with, people that can really help you to live this empowered life with ease. Because now you have a body of like minds to belong to. So if you have any questions about FSC, you might want to ask me. Please feel free to drop it in the chat room or to just raise your virtual hand and I'll call you up. Um, the link is there in the chat. If you want to take the 12 weeks um, online class and then you go on for the next three months to do your um, field work. And another thing that sets FS, the Institute apart is that we don't just leave you on your own. For the three months, you will be in class with us virtually. The classes will hold virtually every Friday. You have your modules to listen to and to watch. Then we meet in class every Friday for the review. For the length of the three months, you will be doing the classes. And the three months where you are doing your field work, you have a dedicated mentor attached to you. Now, I've taken certification programs abroad where I've paid my hard-earned money in foreign currency. I've not had any certification program that gave me a dedicated mentor for six months. So if it's something, because somebody will say, hey, what if I'm not able to master it on my own? Don't worry, we have you covered. You get a dedicated mentor to work with you and your team for six months so that you can master the approach. And it never gets better than this any, anywhere, whether in Africa, in Nigeria, or even across the globe. And you can take me on on that. If you find another institute that gives you all that we have given you with a mentor, for the price of 350,000. Chat me up and say, Dima, you lied. I know you will not find, that's why I can boldly say that. So yes, any question for me? Is there anything you want to understand about the program? Anything you want to understand about the Institute? If you are desirous to change your life, change the life of your family, get tested and proven tools so that you can support people to thrive in life and in their family, then click on that link. 
make the initial payment of 50,000 and spread the rest across um, time so that you can join us in the next class starting February the 3rd. If there's no question, I will be handing over back to add, um, the moderator. Okay, Kenny says, turn on the phone. Kenny says, how is timing like for Friday for very busy professionals? Is the timing flexible? Okay, Kenny, this is what happens. When you sign up for the family systems engineering course, you get your login details to the learning portal. You also get a timetable which shows you the modules you should watch before you come in on Friday. On Friday, we currently have the 7 to 9 p.m. West African time running for the reviews and all the reviews are recorded. So everyone who is a member of a particular stream gets access to the recording to also watch. Secondly, because you also have your dedicated men syndicate mentor who is working with you, should you miss any review class, you have your mentor to also reach out to in your mentoring group to help you make up what you may have missed. Again, we also recognize that we have people from outside our time zone who are asking for more flexible time. So the Institute is working on having another time slot for people who may not fit into the nine to seven to nine. So if you're somebody like that, you want to also um, get across to us, maybe through an email, um, Tolani, please drop a cabo at IFED while we are um, collating the number of people who want another different um, time zone um, for the reviews. But right now what we are running is the Friday reviews, 7 to 9 p.m. West African time, where you have the recordings, um, the sessions recorded, and you also have your syndicate mentors to run you through them, should you miss any of the review classes. Over to you, Tolani. I don't see any other question, but if there's any other question, please feel free to email us at ecabo at ifed.com and we'll be glad to respond to you immediately. Tolani. You're muted. You are still muted. We can't hear you. Admin, can okay. you unmute? Okay. Yes, please. I was. With Hello, can you hear? Okay. Us? Okay. So I think I am now. I was waiting for the admin to unmute me. You would agree with me that this has been an amazing session today. Thank you to Prof. Thank you to Mr. Price for where. Thank you to Mrs. Chidiman Wobi. Thank you so much for everyone who has joined in today. We have had an amazing session and we've all learned something beautiful today. I'm super excited to be a part of this house. And I would also want to mention that this um, approach is, is indigenous, it's not a foreign model. So that we are aware that while we use this approach, we are not using some um, foreign model to work with Africans. It's very indigenous. And then you could work with everyone because we understand the reality of everyone that we're working with rather than just some foreign thing that we've talked about. Thank you so much for everyone who's joining today. We wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Thank you so much, Prof, one more time. It was an amazing, amazing session. Thank you so much. And for everyone who is joining, we're saying a beautiful thank you to you. And please do not miss this amazing opportunity. It only comes once in a while. This course is ideally 400, but please, you can see the link in the chat room. Just ensure that you click on it if you want to make a 50,000 payment. First of all, the link is there. If you want to make a 100,000 payment, first of all, it's there. Because by the time we are out of this meeting, I think we have about 24 um, to 48 hours to be able to do this while the price would go back to the original price. Thank you one more time for, for everyone who's joined us today. Let's all have a beautiful